Hey guys, how's it going? I'm here in Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is one country in the Balkans, part of the former Yugoslavia. And today is going to be uh, kind of interesting. I'm going to visit the site where World War I was ultimately triggered. And so I figured rather than just go to the site and uh, just you know show the spot, because it's not all that much to actually see there, it's just a street corner, then I would show some of uh, Sarajevo in the process and also talk a little bit about what I have learned about uh, this event that is so momentous in um, world history, the uh, First World War, which began in 1914. And so what happened, as much as I've learned so far, is a very uh, complicating series of events, is that the Archduke of uh, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Franz Ferdinand, who is the heir to the throne of that empire, which um, controlled a uh, large region of Eastern Europe of Austria and Hungary and what later became Yugoslavia and is now the Balkan countries and so he was the heir to that empire and he was visiting uh, this part of the empire that uh, he was going to inherit and he was assassinated. His assassin was a young 19 year old but he was not the only assassin at that uh, site at the time. What happened was they were uh, driving in a car and there was a route, it's kind of reminiscent of the uh, JFK assassination. There was a uh, route planned out, I guess, that was, I guess, known. And there were six or seven different assassins, people from this region who were opposed to the occupation of their you know, area by the Austro-Hungarian king. And so they had planned to kill the heir in order to ultimately bring about their own freedom in this area. And so they had staked out six or seven different assassins along the route that the car would be driving. And actually their plan failed, so they thought, because the first one chickened out, the second one threw a small bomb, which landed beyond the car and it was uh, delayed. And so it exploded too late and it, uh, injured some other people in the crowd and then after that the car took off and started uh, racing away and they weren't able to carry out their plot to assassinate and so the person who eventually became the assassin i forget his name it's kind of a weird sounding name he went to have a sandwich and so he was like sitting here in the neighborhood that i'm about to uh, walk through and so he was having lunch and the car with franz ferdinand came back to this area for uh, some reason, something to do with the uh, victims of the uh, bomb attack. And they actually took a wrong turn and happened to turn down a street that was exactly where this fellow was having his lunch. He saw the car, jumped up, he still had his gun, and he fired two shots. And uh, with the two shots, then he killed Franz Ferdinand and his pregnant wife. And so that was what sparked World War I because the Austro-Hungarian king, I guess, uh, at the time, decided to retaliate against uh, this uh, area. And then it was a complicating series of events that then led to the Great War, as it was called. All right, I am now in the old city of Sarajevo, which is pretty mellow, as you can see. It was super uh, packed last night. I think it might be a Sunday. Yeah, I think it's a Sunday, so that's why it's so quiet. Apparently Sarajevo is the only city in Europe that has, in the same neighborhood, a mosque, a Catholic church, a uh, Orthodox Christian church, and a synagogue all in the same area. And so that speaks to the uh, ethnic and religious diversity of this city and this area in general. Wow, it is hot. It is like five in the evening now and uh, definitely feeling the heat. So this is a popular shopping and dining area. I came down here last night and had dinner. And it was just jam packed with people on a Saturday night. This is the Sacred Heart Cathedral a Catholic church and cathedral, the largest cathedral in Bosnia and Herzegovina, completed in 
Pope John Paul. And so continuing in this direction, over to the assassination spot. And check this out. A classic London double-decker bus with cheers on it. Interesting. I have no idea what the uh, story is here with this. Where everybody knows your name. A lot of cheers references. Strange. I wonder if this was like parked in front of Cheers or like what's the deal with Cheers? This is Cheers Bar in Sarajevo. Okay. A little bit of a uh, digression from the assassination of Franz Ferdinand in the start of World War One. Head down here to the Miljaka River. And so this is the Miljaka River. And the site where the triggering of World War I ultimately happened, right over here. This museum is dedicated to the assassination of Franz Ferdinand and the various events that led up to World War I in the decades that preceded it, because it was a lot of uh, various um, events and tensions that uh, existed in this region. From this place on 28th June 1914, Gavrilo Princip assassinated the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophia. Right here. A photo there showing the arrest of the assassins, bringing the accused to court. Trial of the assassins. Because all of the different uh, conspirators, the uh, potential assassins, were captured and uh, tried. Several of them were um, executed. The actual assassin, Gavrilo Princip, was not executed because he was too young. He was only 19 years old. And so he was put in uh, prison. However, he died about four years later into his 20-year prison term because of uh, tuberculosis, I think. And this is called simply the Sarajevo Museum. Museum of the City of Sarajevo, 1878 to 1918. So it covers that whole time period leading up to the end of World War I in 1918, and then the ultimate creation of the country of Yugoslavia, which came out of the breakup of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and uh, existed up until around 1992, when that then broke up and uh, turned into six different countries so Bosnia and Herzegovina here, Slovenia, which I visited already, Croatia, which I also visited, Montenegro, Macedonia, and Serbia, including Kosovo. And then the Balkans War of the 1990s actually happened after Yugoslavia had broken up into those uh, six different countries. And then there were still uh, obviously political um, tensions and uh, various uh, religious and ethnic issues going on which ultimately resulted in that uh, war between 1992 and 1995, which the United States ended up getting involved in and ultimately uh, resolved that conflict. And fortunately, it has been uh, peaceful in this region for more than two decades now. And so I'm going to wander just a little bit more, give a bit more of a taste of uh, the uh, old city of Sarajevo here. A mosque there.
And I'll head back into the old town here. Wow, this is a cute car. Alright, thanks for watching. More coming from Sarajevo.